So um, I am Joelle Gomez. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for the Children's Home of Stockton and um, born and raised here in this community. I've been in the nonprofit, pro nonprofit sector for my whole career, so 24 years as the Executive Director at the Women's Center, which was working with survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, runaway homeless youth. Um, in the last three years, when I made the transition here to Children's Home of Stockton, um, it's opened up a whole new world in working with foster youth. And the kids that we see here, which is um, 52 boys and girls, ages 12 to 18, these are kids who have experienced the most severe traumas. I mean, things that you and I could probably even fathom at such a young age. And while they're here in our care, in our residential program, we provide them really intensive care, counseling, treatment, um, so that they can find a new path, a new opportunity, and hopefully become you know, thriving, happy individuals. The transition was hard because when you're so rooted in our community and known for one particular agency. I think I, my name and the Women's Center was kind of synonymous. <laughs> and still to this day, I get people who will come up and say, so how's the Women's Center? I'm like, I'm sure they're fine, <laughs> but how's the children's home? So I, I do appreciate and love that the transition was gonna take time. You know, I have always believed that having mentors in your life no matter how young or how old you are, is important. So, I mean, you might think as a young person, okay, I should have a mentor. I'm 52 and I still have mentors because life, you're always learning. And I think it's important to have people at different times in your life. So it's not necessarily always been just one person. I can say my dad though is probably, and he's no longer alive, but he was definitely a huge mentor in my life. I have two daughters and, oh, they make me so proud. Um, I have a 24-year-old and a 26-year-old. So they're young, young women, but one just graduated um, in December and she just on Friday accepted um, an offer, a job offer, which is gonna take her to Cambridge, Massachusetts um, in the Navy department. And my other daughter is an, um, a supervisor, manager for NorCal. So they're like an EMT um, outfit out of the East Bay. So what really touches me is when my daughter, the one who just took this job in Cambridge, um, the end of December, she had to go to a job fair in Washington, D.C. And she was telling me she was going around and talking to all the vendors. And one of them asked a really good question. He's like, okay, I've got your resume. Tell me something that's not on your resume. Tell me something about you that's not on your resume. And it made her think for a moment. But the first thing that she said was, um, you know, my, she told him who I was and what the kind of work that I did in this community. And she said, the involvement at So Young helped her realize how important it is to help people, especially people who might not realize that they need help and not giving up on them. And I mean, I was just really touched that that came out of her seeing me, you know, in doing the work that I'm doing here in this community. Well, I'm going to I'm going to kind of answer that in a couple of ways, because um, I often get asked, you know, how do you take care of yourself and how can you even hear all of these stories, whether it be an adult or a child or a teenager telling you about, you know, what's gone on in these traumatic situations? Um, one, I'm human. So there are times where I will fight back the tears. You know, I will bite my tongue and try to stay strong and still empathetic so that the person will will open up. And I think that's the most important thing is that you, one, not just by words, but by actions. When I say my door is open, it's always open. I have so many of our kids who will just come in and they're, they're getting a little bit more routine where they'll say, can I schedule some time? Because most of the time they can come in and if I, I'll drop whatever I'm doing. because. It's really why we're here, it's the kids. I think any advice that I would give to anybody who's in need of support, guidance, direction, or actual services, 
first and foremost, don't hold on to that in your just you know in your head and in your heart. Reach out to somebody, anybody who you think is a trusted friend. Um, and that could be a friend, it could be a family member, it could be a parent, it could be a teacher, a coach, anybody. But the first step is just getting it out there because oftentimes we have found that people who are even having, having the darkest times succeed because they attribute it one person who made a difference. So that one person could be not just the person who hears your story or your plea for help, but they're the ones that can help you connect you to what resources are available in our community. If you're if you're bold enough, I mean, I would also say <laughs> plan B is to not be ashamed or afraid to reach out yourself for help and go to, you know, an agency, a nonprofit, um, your school counselor, but somebody maybe with authority to help um, you actually find the resources that can help you.